This is a demonstration of the dynamic kernel patching feature using RHEL. Dynamic kernel patching is the ability to patch the code in the running kernel without rebooting. This allows server administrators to patch their systems against vulnerabilities immediately without the need to immediately reboot, which usually requires an urgent downtime process be used. In this demonstration, I will cover the generation of hot patch kernel modules from a source level patch, the application of that hot patch kernel module to the kernel, and proof of the modified functionality. For this demonstration, I've prepared a simple patch as a contrived example. While this patch is not a CVE fix, which are the most likely candidates for this type of patching, this simple example provides an easy method to observe the change made by the hot patch module. This patch makes a simple change to the function meminfo proc show in the kernel. This function is called whenever the user reads the contents of slash proc slash meminfo. As you can see, we have added the print case statement to the function. This message will print out to the kernel log whenever the user reads slash proc slash meminfo. The next step is to build the hot patch module. This is done with a simple kpatch build command whose only input is the file containing the patch against the currently running kernel version. As you can see, the hot patch generation engine has detected our changed function and included its code in the hot patch module. Dynamic kernel patching takes advantage of a feature in modern Linux kernels that has traditionally been used for tracing. At build time, the compiler injects a no-op at the beginning of each function. This instruction can be replaced during runtime to call tracing facilities like ftrace. However, it's not limited to this use. When the dynamic kernel patching replaces a function in the kernel, it registers an ftrace handler and modifies the return address to return to the new version of the function rather than the old one. This effectively bypasses the old function. There is no in-place modification of the code allowing for easy removal of the hot patch if desired. The next thing to do is install the hot patch module on the system. This is done with the kpatch install command. We can confirm that the hot patch module has been installed with the kpatch list command. Before applying the patch, I'm going to start an instance of GLX gears in order to demonstrate that the system stays responsive during the hot patching process. Next, we apply the hot patch module to the running system. This is done with the kpatch load command. We can confirm that the patch was loaded by looking at the kernel log. In order to confirm that the patch has been applied to the running system, we can exercise the change by printing the contents of slash proc slash meminfo. For completeness, the hot patch can also be removed. This is done with the kpatch unload command. Now, if we read the contents of slash proc slash meminfo, we see that the message no longer appears in the kernel log.